we need to be patient and there's no shortcut. So you want to get everything done tomorrow, right? So so sometimes there are different priorities and different realities in life as we see with the COVID pandemic now. So, you know, it's it's a marathon, not a sprint, it's a long journey and, and we need to be more patient. Welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Just sit back, relax, and learn from the leaders of today. It's a journey. Each one is different, unique, inspiring. Let's get started. This episode is powered by Jay Ventures, a community-driven VC fund in Silicon Valley in partnership with Loomi Tech and sponsored by Hippo Insurance, Turing, Upwest Labs, and Hillel at Stanford. Speech-to-text has completely transformed the way we handle data. Meet Tom Livne, the CEO and founder of Verbit, the world's leading AI-powered transcription and captioning platform. Tom has vast leadership experience in technology companies, ranging from early-stage startups to enterprises with tens of millions of dollars in annual revenue. Tom served as a board member and investor in Convexum, a counter-drone platform that was acquired for $60 million. He holds an LLB and BA from IDC Herzliya and an MBA from the Technion, Israel Institute of Technology. Tom Levine, thank you for joining me. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Michael? I'm doing fine. Thank you for joining me. Are you in Israel right now? Yes, I'm at my home in Herzliya, yes. I love it. So, you know, you're at your home by day, but, but today you're also the CEO of Verbit AI, a fascinating company in the AI space and the transcription space. And I can't wait to hear all about this industry and the human-computer interaction when it comes to, you know, speech to text and, and how, you know, the world is moving and what Verbit AI is doing in that regard. But I think that even, even before that, I think your journey is just, uh, is just fascinating from being, you know, a warrior and paramedic at the paratrooper special forces to getting your uh, MBA at Yale School. School of Management, uh, all the way leading up to, you know, being on the, you know, more in the investment world and the dark world uh, before becoming the CEO of Verbit. So, Tom, take me all the way back even to, you know, your par- to the paratrooper days. Do you know that you're going to be, you know, in the tech scene? Do you know that you're going to become an investor and a founder and a CEO? Was that in you from a young age? You know, I was always... Uh, was a really ambitious guy that you know aiming to reach to the top as, as since I remember myself and you know I remember that we had a debate among of our friends that you know to our parents they had much um, you know more opportunities to become uh, successful in their careers because it was more blue ocean back then for everything for real estate for you know, uh, all different categories. And then I was like telling them, I, I disagree. I think, you know, we are, you know, born to the uh, uh, decades of, of technology and high tech. And I think uh, we have, you know, uh, endless opportunities. We just need to, to aim for that, even though if we are not with the, you know, technological background and the A200 units, etc. So I think I demonstrated that you don't have to be this kind of uh, uh, people in order to be uh, uh, successful in your right. career in the tech scene. So definitely wanted to go into the, the tech world and to prove uh, uh, and to build something. Right. And so, so you know that you want to build something, but you choose to you choose to start your journey more on the investment side, on the financial side, and that you know you see you're associated with Lomitech. You're also an investor with some other groups and a private investor, and you know on the board member of of, of a drone company, right, which was acquired by NSO. So, t- what, what was the transition towards the investment world? Why not go straight into you know being an entrepreneur and and you know making it big? Yes, I think, you know, if uh, we start earlier with with the Army, as you discussed, I think it really helped me with resiliency, right? So once you are in the Special Forces, it helps you uh, in the future in in your career. I didn't know how much it's going to help me. And then I said, in order to be a successful entrepreneur, in my point of view, I need to to learn it from, from the other side, to see how investors think how they're looking at different companies, how they evaluate. So I think it's really helped me, you know, to get my perspective on, on you know, do's and don't do's and all the, the mistakes. Although, you know, I did many mistakes in Verbit, although I think I thought, uh, you know, uh, I learned a lot from, from uh, the investing side. But then 
you know, once you go into a tent zone, you always uh, do mistakes. It's it's unavoidable, right? At least for the first timers. And so yeah, so th- this was my strategy to to learn the the profession from the inside and to get the investor view. And then once you are, you know, going to the entrepreneurial awards, I think it's really really helped me, you know, with many skills like fundraising, uh, etc. And um, you know, I, I feel lucky that I implemented it uh, successfully in Verbi. Amazing. So tell, talk to me a little bit about the space that you chose to go into. Uh, you know, transcriptions, you know, human-computer interaction when it comes to, to speech-to-text, uh, different use cases, you know, all around the world. And, and b- even before we talk about Verbit, I'd love to, to understand how you get there, right? Because it's, it, it, it doesn't sound like this is, you know, a problem that you necessarily, you know, dealt with yourself, you know, throughout the years as you're, you know, in the paratroopers or in the US, and perhaps it was, I'm, I'm very curious, especially how do you get to, you know, have the domain expertise knowing, okay, this is a place where I want to invest my time and energy as an investor. You know that you always looked at the founder's experience and whether it was relevant and whether they have product market fit. So w- talk to me a little bit about some of your thought process as you're, fa- as you're creating this company that is soon to become, a, you know, an amazing company here in Israel. Yes, well, they, they, actually, I was a uh, frustrated customer. So, you know, my, if I go back in my career, I'm a lawyer. No one is perfect, right? So uh, our audience will forgive me for that. But, you know, I remember as a lawyer, you know, how much time and how much money we were investing in the legal transcription. Right. And then once we got the transcription, it was always late, not accurate. And sometimes I had to do the editing job myself. And I was really, really frustrated. Customer is an entrepreneur. You're looking for problem with high friction, low efficiencies, where you can bring the technology, and and then to change it uh, around. And then when I started to investigate the, you know, the transcription industry, I saw that the legal ver- transcription and legal vertical is only one use case out of you know tens of use cases and creating a huge opportunity of thirty billion dollar addressable market that been said fully manual and really legacy market and i said hey you know it's a great timing great opportunity and then let's uh, build the uh, you know the world's uh, ai based leading company in the space and here we are four years after uh with verb well for four years after and and now you're sort of you know a market leader in this regard do you, did you expect to reach you know the milestone of raising from you know top Top VCs like Viola and going on to raising a Series C, I believe over 120 million dollars in funding. But but do you, did you really you know expect to reach you know these heights so soon, so quickly? Um, the simple answer is no. I can tell you that I I you know hoped I really hoped to be there and 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 I said you know I'm going to do my very best. Uh, uh, to to be where we are today, and we're still, you know, at the beginning of the journey. In my point of view, you know, I think that uh, if I'm looking what I'm expecting to be in four years from now, it's uh, you know, uh, um, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue and 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 billions of dollars in market cap and publicly traded companies. This is my my vision for the next four years, but. You know, I, I didn't anticipate it will happen so, so fast. I hope it will. And I'm really glad and happy that, you know, it all came up together, you know, from, you know, raising the right investors, making the right decision on which vertical we should attack earlier, you know, about the critical hire, right? And the people you work with, because eventually it's all about the people. So a lot of, you know, really, really important decision we, we made along the journey that brought us to where we are to, uh, today. So you're talking, you know, you mentioned on both posts that you have over 400% year over year growth. You know, people are loving the product. You're, you're already showing how, you know, it's relevant for, for tens of use cases, but I'd love to go a little bit higher and, and understand, you know, a little bit better this, this market and, and how people are interacting with computers. Because one of the things that automatically I think of when I think of speech to text and transcriptions, and uh, I'm, you know, a, you, I'm a one particular use case, for example, for this show where I have transcriptions. And it, it sounds like this is one of those fields where you really have to be really precise, right? 
Sometimes it is good enough to have like 90, 95% accuracy, but especially when you're going to medical and legal, you can't really afford to mess up a word, right? I mean, that could literally be the difference between going on record uh, truthfully or not truthfully. So how do you even, you know, tackle, because you said that you started your, one of the first use cases was coming from the financials and legal scene and seeing how difficult it was. So how do you adjust? On one hand, you have, you know, a startup where you're going to have bugs, you know, no matter what. On the other hand, you're choosing use cases that are, that inherently are some of the most sensitive ones. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a great question, right? So, um, you know, we, we started uh, earlier in our career in, in the path in, in the, of Verbit in the, the education space, right? And, and then I remember, you know, and, and this is an advice that I'm giving to all entrepreneurs, right? So, uh, you know, kind of fake it until you make it, right? Because, you know, once you start yeah, uh, building something, you know, you cannot expect to be full-blown ready. And I remember when to do our first customer, I came and, you know, told them we have a, an amazing product. Everything is, you know, AI based and uh, all the superlative, you know, you can think on and then say, hey, you know, we want to work with you. Let's do it. And then I was like, oh, shit. Now what are we going to do? We need to actually to deliver to the customer. And then we started doing it manually, right? I remember every CEO has like this, uh, you know, moment of... Uh, you know the, the lowest moment in, in in the journey and you know for me it was like okay we were managed to sell the product to the first customer and then we said okay now we really need to deliver so until the product will be ready we I I need to it. do it you know fully manual m myself and then so we started to, to to develop and progress as a company in how we are you know, ensuring, and if you want to dive into, you know, how we are ensuring the top quality with the human in the loop kind of uh, model, I think we'll need another 20 minutes to discuss it because it's so complex from, you know, how we have 22,000 freelancers in our community. So how we recruit those 22,000 people, then how we train and onboard them, you know, to work uh, in on our platform, then how we build the, you know, uh, the credit score and do the quality assessment, make sure they're reaching to the 100% accuracy, et cetera. So it's really, really complex and a lot of IP and you need to think about it as Uber for transcription. So, uh, right. And I think what, one of the most, I think, fascinating things to an outsider looking at this journey is you made a very deliberate decision um, on, on how you approach the market, right? So you have companies like Otter AI, you have the script that are really trying to, you know, give the layman, you know, the every person, you know, who needs these tools, you know, some, something that, something that works at, with, with a relatively good accuracy. But, but you came and you said, you know, I'm not really interested right now in, you know, giving everybody this, this access and being 100% for everybody. But you're going to tackle these specific industries that need really tailored solutions, like medical, like finance, like legal, which, you know, on their own, there are tens of billions of dollars in market. What was the decision process for you like? Did you intend to go that route? Did you understand that you need to focus in order to succeed? Or, or maybe you, now in retrospect, if you say, you know what, maybe we could have gone to, all, to everything. We didn't need to necessarily just focus on that. Yeah, so I think, you know, it started with like the, um, you know, the DNA, right? So I think uh, the DNA and what is more suitable is B2B company rather than b2c what you the names you described they are more b2c related companies and i remember i had a friend of mine um who were a ceo of uh, you know similar translation company he told me look to my companies i have you know uh x amount of uh let, let's call it 20 million dollars in, in revenue and i have more than one hundred thousand customers Right, and then he said, "My competitor, they have uh, five hundred million in revenue. Think, guess how many customers they have?" And he told me seven hundred. Right, so I said, "Wow, okay." So it means you need to, and eventually, if you look at uh, all the public traded companies, etc., they are making most of their revenue from the Fortune five hundred, Fortune one thousand, Fortune two thousand companies. Right, so. You know, then I said, we need to be a B2B company and look for the bigger customers and to serve them well. 
and make sure they're happy and growing with us over time. And one of the, you know, you mentioned that we grow more than 400% last year, which is was an amazing year. But also really important and critical figure is what we call the net dollar retention. We're making sure that our customers are happy and growing with us over time. And so we're able to, to get more, uh, you know, feature for them and, and more usage for them. So everyone is happy. So this is a critical focus for us in, in the company. And, you know, once you're doing it more B2C, you, you barely know your customer. And it's really hard, at least the way we build our company to bring value. So, you know, the, the market is big enough to have two kinds of uh, approach and companies, but we are definitely more suitable for the, you know, the B2B and the enterprise. So as, as the, as, you know, a leader in this, in this company, you're seeing this growth, obviously your role is changing on a day-to-day basis, right? A company that I believe pretty much, you know, aimed to double its size uh, during, you know, 2020, your, your job changes, your focus changes, and your understanding of the market changes as you're obviously managing these, these clients. How do you make sure your customers are happy? How, because, you know, a technology first company that, you know, you need technology, it, proper technology with the human in the loop and this whole system of onboarding these 20,000 people that are helping. At the end, really what it comes down to is whether this, the, the, the main customers are happy. So how do you actually go about that sales cycle and, and, and get that quick feedback to make sure you really uh, retain them? Yes, I think it's it's easy. You can describe it in, in two words. It, it's communication and people, right? So eventually, you know, we we hire the best people. We have, uh, you know, amazing customer success team and the leader of the customer success team are doing phenomenal jobs, right? And they're all about serving the customer and listening to the customers and setting the right processes and the right communication tools you know, in order to listen to them and to be responsive if they have any problems, or you know, we said, hey, let's 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 uh, think together, let's um, dream together. Which kind of features you would like to see, and then we are prioritizing it in our roadmap and investing in the R and D to stay competitive and and to lead uh, the market and to innovate the market. So again, it's all about having the right people in place, and then you know, having good uh, and transparent communication uh, um, you know sometimes I, I what what i learned is all about setting the right expectation right so right. you say hey you know what x y z and then the customer is getting something different then you know there is a disappointment and then it's all um you know starting to go to the wrong path so definitely uh, we work a lot about the communication and setting the right expectation and since then, everyone is really, really happy. I love that. And, and talk to me a little bit about this, the innovation approach and in a really B2B company with, with these sorts of clients. How do you actually go about doing discovery, really understanding, okay, these are perhaps the new verticals that we want to tackle, or these are our shortfalls or shortcomings in this vertical that we want to tackle? And, and sort of how do you even think about your ta- you're outlining this vision four years from now? How do you go about thinking, okay, what is the world going to look like for transcriptions, specifically in those sectors in four years, because, you know, nobody knows, but as, you know, the visionary of the company, you kind of have to pave the way over there. Yeah, but I think it's a two different questions. One is like our strategy, which verticals we're going to attack later, and then how we innovate. I think it's two different uh, questions, so I'll answer both. So I think in terms of strategy, we're looking, um, on, on we said like three categories and then we, we we rank them and then this is how we get the decision first is is how big is the the vertical second is like how competitive is the vertical you know who is our competitor and third how much uh, r d investment we need to do in order to penetrate right and then you kind of answer all those uh, uh, um, questions and then according to that you said the the strategy, okay, because there is minimal investment in R and D. This is so big, vertical. Although there is a lot of competitors, we think we can win because of one, two, three, right? So, this is how we, we think about the strategy and how we had the other verticals. In terms of innovation, right? So, which is much more difficult, in my point of view. So then we need to come up with some thesis 
right around what we want to build and i can give an example so we are you know a major player in the legal transcription vertical so you know one one part of our plan to this year is to be beyond transcription is not just to give the, the the transcription of the depositions is to give insights to the lawyer and what do i mean by that right so think about that you're transcribing a deposition or and you have the the witness that all also gave his uh the deposition you know two weeks ago and now in the in this deposition he is contradicting himself right because we transcribed both the previous one and this one we can see that um, inconsistency and then to give a push notification and, and insight in real time to the lawyer to make sure that he's identifying that right so uh this is kind of uh, a thesis that we build that we think it's going to bring value to our customers and then you know we kind of need to to be able to tell the story in the right way and then to start do some market validation and see if the customer will be willing to pay for this and also to hear from them let's dream together what we'd like to see uh, in this product and then kind of writing down the ideas and, and thinking about it internally and see it if it makes sense and this is how we make sure we are ahead of the curve in terms of innovation and leading the the market i love it tom a uh, fascinating journey uh, i think that you're I, I think that, you know, I, a few things that I took particular inspiration from, I think one of them is, is, you know, this idea of focus, this idea of setting expectations, but but being very intentional with what the company is trying to achieve and not stopping there, but thinking, okay, how can we how can we build upon that and, and look at the world, you know, in, in a bigger sphere with, with what you're doing now and what you just mentioned that I think is, is just brilliant. And I have two uh, short but difficult questions to ask you. One is, what is one thing that you would tell yourself back when you were, you know, a paramedic and paratroopers, what, what, would, what would you tell, you know, young Tom as he's preparing to go on this journey? This is particularly directed to, you know, the young uh, entrepreneurs and engineers following this. That it's, it's a very, very long journey. And, uh, you know, although we are entrepreneurs, this is not the strongest characteristic, which is patience. Right, so we need to be patient, and there is no shortcut. Although you want to get everything done tomorrow, right? So, so sometimes there are different priorities and different realities in life, as we see with the COVID pandemic now. So, you know, it's it's a marathon, not a sprint. It's a long journey, and and we need to be more patient. I love it. Yes, I think sometimes we forget that you know, in twenty minutes we cover you know, years of journeys and insights, uh, you know, Verbit over four years in the making, it's, it's so young uh, to reach the milestones that you've reached, but still four years is a, is a long time uh, to, and in 20 minutes, sometimes it feels short. So thank you for mentioning that. And the most important question, three words that you would use to describe yourself. Um, passionate, resilient, entrepreneur. I love it. Tom, Todagaba, thank you very, very much. Uh, I, I love the journey that you're on and, I, and I'm getting inspired by uh, not just talking to you, but by following it from the sidelines. So thank you for making the time to speak with me today and stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you, Michael. Thanks for hosting me. It was a pleasure. Bye-bye.